Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Um, and in case you hadn't heard, although I think everyone has by now, um, the clocks fell back an hour last night for most of you all, most of the country at least. Um, and if it uh, did in your area, you are now officially one hour early for wherever you're supposed to be going. So you get extra time to drink that morning coffee and listen to your daily tarot card. And I'm shuffling them up now to see what we might get. And just to let you all know, um, when I do these, I do edit them down a little bit because sometimes things happen while I'm doing these. I get phone calls or, or I get tongue tied up on words and can't pronounce stuff. And, uh, so I, I edit out, uh, I know like yesterday's reading took me a full, uh, well, almost a full 50 minutes in tape time. And, you know, I had to edit it down to just 20 because it just was too ridiculously long. And plus, you heard the whole boring phone call, which I thought no one would want to hear. But, uh, okay, one more shuffle of these ought to do it before I draw. Okay. Now, let's see what comes up today. Let me see. Which way? I'll take this way. All right. So today's card is... Oh... Today's card is a high priestess. And this card is for everyone. You don't have to be a Scorpio. You can be any sign. It's just a card drawn for everybody. Okay. This card uh, is the high priestess. She represents uh, like characters like from mythology, um, such as Persephone, Artemis, uh, Diana, Isis, um, anyone pure and full of virtue in the myth mythological stories. When you encounter her, in these cards you will find her sitting on a stone between two pillars at solomon's temple the jackin which is why there's a j and the boaz which is the b jackin is the pillar of establishment and boaz is the pillar of strength the pillars also depict the duality of nature masculine and feminine good and evil negative and positive the high priest location between the two suggests that it is her responsibility to serve as a mediator between the depths of the reality she is the third pillar in this card the path between the two. You will also notice she wears a, the crown of Isis, which can mean she is a believer of magic. 
the high priestess wearing of the solar cross denotes that she is connected to the season of the earth and the earth itself. The crescent moon at her feet, also in many depictions of the Virgin Mary, and means that she has a complete grasp over her emotions, and the pomegranates growing up around her refer to the ambition of the priestess. The meaning of the high priestess is related with inner knowledge. Her appearance in a reading can signify that it is time for you to listen to your intuition rather than prioritizing your intellect and conscious mind. When the high priestess shows up, it can depict an archetype known as the divine feminine, the mysterious female that understands and holds the answer to the deep unknowns, religion, self, nature. She represents someone that is intuitive and beginning to open up to her or his spirituality. Meditation, prayer, and new spiritual work is indicated. Her appearance in a reading can signify that it is time for you to listen to your intuition rather than prioritizing your intellect and conscious mind. The card itself shows a nighttime scene, meaning that the world in which she protects and guards is one that may at first seem frightening, but has the potential to lead us into the growth of the self. When she appears in a reading, she is calling to you to listen to her message and follow you into her own depths. There is a search within yourself to be done for the answers that you seek. The answers to the questions you have are within, not without. Okay, now for the any meaning of love here the high priestess in a love tarot reading can signify almost imperceivable and unconscious changes that that's in one's emotional state a calm surface can hide intense emotions and even seemingly sim simple dates can turn into raging passions the high priestess tarot love meaning suggests that one needs patience and trust for your intuition. Be honest with others and yourself and let what is hidden come to the surface. In a relationship, the high priestess shows increasing intimacy and openness. In a love tarot reading, this card signifies that honesty is essential to making your relationship as strong as it can be. Now, as for a career reading, it, it means when it comes to your career, the high priestess may signal a period of education or higher learning. You may be returning to school for training. If you're in a creative field, this card also can suggest new inspiration coming from your work. When making big choices about your future career or projects, the high priestess also suggests relying on your gut instincts. There's likely a lot of information there that will aid you. At times, this card can also signal the appearance of a mentor or guide that can help you progress further into your work. Financially, since the High Priestess is related to mystery and the unknown, be wary of discussing your finances with others. This card suggests keeping your financial situation hidden. Alternatively, if you're being presented with the opportunity to put your finances into use, your intuition will know whether or not this, if this is a good choice. Take some time to probe your feelings. If there are red flags, something it won't feel right, listen to those feelings. So overall, being one of three pillar cards on the, in the tarot, the high priestess represents information. But as she, as she is considered to be behind the veil or somewhat psychic, the information is not always forthcoming, exact, or swift to arrive either. The information you need when you draw the High Priestess card may be found within, and such is the reason why she has such a smug smile on her face. She holds the secrets and is putting the power in your hands. In a work situation, you may need to get more information before you make a big decision, or you may need to enhance your skills or knowledge base. 
and love, it could be some time to slow down and take a step back in terms of your emotions. Sometimes we benefit from taking a moment to see how things play out. Clarity arrives in your situation in the form of information very soon, usually within 28 days when you see this card that is directly tied to the moon cycles. The High Priestess is not a card of action and not even a card of communication. Rather, just hold your tongue and sit pretty for a while, and the information you need, too, shall arrive in due time. All right. All right. Today's crystal I'll be showing you is apatite, and it... As you'll see here, come on, focus a little bit. I love this color. This is a beautiful stone. Not so much that end, but uh, yeah, this is very pretty. That blue color, I just love. And it, it's got mica in it, so it, it shimmers a lot. It glistens in the light. Now, apatite, not to be confused with appetite, <laughs> apatite, it, uh, it's good for uh, when confusion clouds our true perception of self, and it's like a thick fog is rolling in, blocking our vision and causing a haz highway hazard. And by hazard, we mean a flurry of toxic emotions that result in a traffic exam of the chakras and a disruption of the flow or of our powerful internal force. This crystal helps to clear away the fog because it reminds us that what's, what lies before and behind are of little consequence. It's the energy that lies within that holds the key to eternal happiness. The Greeks were the first to recognize the chameleon-like qualities of apatite and its, its ability to resemble other crystals, such as peridot. Peridot, peridot. Yeah. The apatite crystal stone, meaning, comes from the Greek word to deceive, owning its nature to its unique properties. A combination of different levels of fluorine, chlorine, and hydroxide, the apatite crystal ranges in colors from deep blue green to green to yellow and sometimes pink or violet. I've only seen this blue. It's almost got a deep, deep, deep teal color, but uh, yeah, it's pretty blue overall. Um, it contains the same elements, though, that make up our tooth enamel making it a, an excellent healing aid for dental issues and mending broken bones. Crystals might seem like the most stable and sedentary objects on earth, yet they are associated with ethereal, otherworldly realms. But don't be deceived by their stillness. Minerals are closely interwoven into our very existence, taking us out of the primordial ooze by giving single cell organisms the evolutionary advantage of teeth and bones. Renew your appetite, not a potite, for life by placing a stone in each hand, which works to balance both sides of the body. Feel the immediate effects of its protective and grounding properties with a renewed sense of calm and self-assuredness. Now its healing properties, Give in to the inspirational qualities of the apatite crystal and encourage a peaceful respite from the confusion that comes from adulting in the modern world. This crystal helps to reawaken a sense of clarity that lights a path to self-expression. It gives us the guidance we need to maintain the delicate balancing act between following our dreams and the daily responsibilities of adulthood. Made from a common group of minerals containing a calcium phosphate base, apatite reminds us that truly knowing oneself is the key to opening up the doors of the universe, a place where anything is possible. 
Speaking of possibilities, here's the game changer in harnessing the full potential of apartheid. Create a daily meditation ritual with a specific intention or goal in mind. It's particularly useful because it works to magnify and strengthen your intentions, giving you the clarity of mind necessary for deepening your focus and spiritual awareness. Begin your journey with apartheid by first creating a sacred space that's conductive to healing. This means putting away the Febreze and Yankee candles and returning to nature with a sage smudge stick like this partly used, but the sage smudge stick, or Palo Santo wood. The Native Americans have used these natural energy purifiers in their cleansing rituals for thousands of years as a way to stay connected to nature and its life-giving elements. Start by smudging your apartheid stone to cleanse it of negative energies that can accumulate over time. Healing crystals act like sponge, soaking up bad vibes so it's important to cleanse them often fully envelop your crystal with sage smoke then give it a specific intention putting it to work for you whatever you call on it setting an intention is an excellent way uh, to access the apartheid stone apartheid stone apartheid, ap, apartheid stone benefits because it aligns the mind with a specific goal Start your therapeutic session by sitting quietly with the stone and letting go of any negative thoughts or grudges that rise to the surface. Meditation practice also provides an opportunity to take stock of your current mind, body, spirit status because it encourages peaceful contemplation. Breathe in energy and exhale the negativity. It's that simple. Especially with the vibrant energy of apartheid revigorating your appetite for life. They keep throwing appetite in here. If you're like most people, you're probably juggling life's daily demands with a slew of pesky thoughts clouding up your judgment. From neurotic to confused and everything in between, these harmful thought patterns are not your friends, but roadblocks holding back from your true potential. To keep these thoughts from mucking up your aura, simply gaze at the stone, a practice that borrows from Zen tradition and encourages peaceful contemplation. This is an excellent time to take stock of your current mind, body, spirit status. Like hot chocolate for the soul, use a potite crystal healing to warm up the chakras by placing a stone over the chest or the breastbone, the thymus chakra. If you're in the mood to break through on the other side, place a stone over the third eye chakra in between the eyebrows and get ready for a magic carpet ride into an expanded spiritual dimension. Hold tight to a pot tight and remember that what you feed your mind determines your appetite for life. But anyway, yes, that is a pot tight. Beautiful crystal. Especially if you like blue. It's beautiful. And it's very, very calming and relaxing. But anyway, that's that's all I have for today. So you all have a blessed Sunday. It's sunny here. I hope it's sunny where you're at. And I hope you have an opportunity to get out there and enjoy it. And you all take care. Peace. And may the rest of your weekend uh, go wonderfully. All right. Bye-bye.